I've been dreaming of a white Christmas just like the ones I never knew. A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight, walking in a winter wonderland. Oh, hello there. <coughs> Sorry, I forgot to turn off my singing voice. What? This is my normal voice, you know. Why does my vocal cords just stay that deep? Anyway, hello and welcome to Matthew's Random Reviews. You're probably wondering what this ribbon is doing here. If you guess it's for cancer, we should probably get... Eyes check because this is a red ribbon for AIDS awareness. I imagine this is because it affects blood cells, though I have no idea why they didn't go with a white one in that case. I'm guessing Ebola doesn't have one because black and brown would be racist and green would be too generic. But you're not here to hear me be cynical about ribbons representing fundraising for diseases. No, you're here to hear me criticize children's entertainment, apparently. So, with that in mind, let me discuss the subject of today's review. Power Rangers has had a handful of Christmas specials. Some people may not fully agree on how objectively bad some of them were, but mostly everyone can agree that Alpha's Magical Christmas was indeed objectively horrible. But is it really? Well, let's roll the seasonal intro and you can find out for yourself. Fuck you, UMG. Fuck you. It's Christmas time at the command center, and Alpha wastes no time in making a plan for a wall break. I'm just putting the final touches on my Christmas tree before the big day arrives. I feel so happy and excited about Christmas this year. Although, I didn't quite start out that way. In fact, I was really pretty sad this morning. This morning? That's how long it took. Most tales like this take place at least a year in the past. The flashback starts with Alpha redundantly complaining about how he can't get into the Christmas spirit, and Zordon isn't exactly very helpful about this problem. Oh Zordon, I just can't seem to get into the Christmas spirit. Cheer up Alpha, it's Christmas Eve, although it does seem strangely quiet without the Power Rangers. Turns out the Rangers are actually helping Santa get the presents ready. This raises several questions, most importantly of which is, why can't Santa just have him else help him like he does every year? Of course, the only answer I can get out of this is that it gives Alpha a reason to lure Santa into delivering presents to the command center so that he can see the rangers that night, which isn't very selfish at all. And the Apparently, Zordon, being a wizard, taught Alpha magic at some point because, you know, robots using magic makes all the sense of the... Uh, you know what? Never mind. Power Rangers barely even makes any sense to begin with when you think about it. Zordon instructs Alpha to press generic button 24284 and a Christmas tree appears. It's just like magic. The magic. That's what was missing. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I'm not touching that one. And now here comes one of the biggest problems with the special. It's padded out with Christmas carols full of random kids singing, and they do literally nothing to further the plot like it would in a musical. And in this case, the song is Oh Christmas Tree. Now I know I played a copyrighted song I got, got a strike for on YouTube already, but unlike Saban, I'm not going to pad this review out. I mean, they're probably public domain songs, but I'm not even going to play a few seconds of these carols in the interest of saving both my time and yours. And there is one that isn't public domain. Zordon instructs Alpha to press generic button 422412, which 
kidnaps a bunch of children while they're still all somehow singing another carol while the teleportation is still happening. This is also one of the biggest problems with the special, as the kids instantly know where they are and who Alpha and Zordon are, even though literally none of this is public knowledge. Also, the fact that they got kidnapped. They are also able to get in without power coins, causing the whole thing to raise so many questions that it's really best not to think about it at all. I might overthink things sometimes, but I have to draw the line somewhere. So Zordon calls it a Christmas party and the kids make generic arts and crafts decorations as they all sing Deck the Halls. Oh yeah, this special is making me want to deck something, but it's not Hall. Ho ho ho! Merry Christmas! Oh no, here we go again. Hello, Santa. Here to lecture me about being overly cynical during the holidays again, are you? Look, I've said it a hundred times already. It's not my fault their world over-commercialized the holiday. And showing the lobbyists mercy is exactly what they want me to do. No, actually, I was taking a break as the All-Star head of schedule this year, and I thought I might as well make a small cameo in your review. Okay, I guess. Alpha asks one of the kids what their favorite holiday traditions is. The kid responds by saying that he likes to go sleigh riding. Ah, oh, I remember when I was skinny enough to do that. You're one of the personification gods of Christmas, along with the nihilist personification god, the Krampus, the spirit of Christmas, and the personification god of both winter and Christmas, Jack Frosty Frost. You always look like that. Actually, I put on a tiny bit more weight over the years. Sure you have. Alpha then asked the kid if the sleigh has jingle bells, and well, you can guess what happened next. Hey, this is one of my favorite carols. That's because you invented the concept of putting bells on sleighs to begin with. I can't deny this fact, I admit. One of the kids decided to make Christmas cookies. I love those things. Well, maybe really you have been putting a bit more weight in recent years now that I think about it. Seriously though, look at the way this girl reacts when Alpha posts her idea. Yay! Alpha somehow managed to segue the cooking of cookies into Good King Wenselis, or however it's pronounced. The song does involve a feast. The Alpha's logic for the segue is that said king went out into the cold. More relevantly though, the kids are eating what appears to be either a Christmas dinner or a banquet of snacks as they sing. Makes me wish I had been there sooner. Ho ho ho! Now now Santa, you know you're not supposed to show up in the middle of a meal. That's just rude anyway. Oh, it looks like it was just icing and decorations for the cookies anyway. How did people see this kind of stuff on VHS tapes anyway? Look how blurry everything is! Oh, that's not the fault of the format. That's the fault of whoever set up the lighting. Oh, I guess so many bright colors in such a dimly lit area would affect the quality back then regardless. One of the kids has a creepy grin on his face, and apparently he was thinking about presents. And all the other kids say that they are as well. Don't make them think about monkeys, Alpha. Alpha segues this into up in the house top by mentioning Santa's helpers? The alarm goes off and as usual, Alpha panics, especially concerned because of it being Christmas. Oh, that was my fault. The Rangers wanted to contact the command center and I may or may not have illegally used a communication line to do so. Well, that would explain it, but that's an evil alien detector alarm. I'm not going into details regarding how exactly I wired the line. I guess I'll just take your word for it then. I informed the children that I was almost ready to take off, and they respond by singing another one of my favorite carols. Jolly old Saint Nicholas. 
then the kids asked Alpha if he's wishing for it for this Christmas, but we kind of already know that because his wish was basically the premise of this entire special, so of course they sing I'll Be Home for Christmas, which interestingly has a bunch of jokes of the Rangers instead of the kids just singing this time. The kids go have to go home and Alpha bids them farewell, but the kids have one last gift for Alpha. Well give it a hint. It doesn't need batteries and it will never wear out. And you can take it wherever you like. Hmm, I give up. What is it? It's love. You know, under normal circumstances, this would be heartwarming, but with how poorly executed this episode was, it just winds up being disturbing instead. They sing one last song together, one of my personal favorites, Silent Night, and the kids take off through the dry ice portal to the tune of a reprised verse. The alarm goes off again, but it's just the rangers teleporting in. This isn't your fault again, is it? No, Zordon just forgot to set his security system properly. Not all of them could make it, however. But the other three left seizing greetings in the green screen globe, and Zordon actually mentions that the other rangers went to the peace conference and never came back. The rangers in the command center say hello and some generic holiday stuff and say that they have to go, but not before Alpha makes it snow indoors and they sing We Wish You a Merry Christmas with a bunch more flashbacks. The episode ends with Alpha saying some more stuff to the audience, and the credits roll the tune of Jingle Bells again. At least Billy showed up and I'm sure a lot of people were glad that Tommy showed up. I'm not one of those people. Also, am I the only one who noticed the distinct lack of Here Comes Santa Claus or Santa Claus is Coming to Town, Rudolph, Frosty, the Snowman, or Let It Snow? I noticed they had perfect spots to put them, leaving one to think that it was copyright issues, but they had I'll Be Home for Christmas, which is definitely not in the public domain either. So, Santa, I'm curious, what did you think of this special? Well, it was a bit light on the Rangers, but it was undeniably jolly. Honestly, I have to agree with you, but the lack of the Rangers is really the very biggest problem about this whole thing. People come into this expecting this to be a Christmas special about Power Rangers fighting evil aliens, instead it winds up being a bit more like the Ewoks cartoon with the token kid appeal character taking center stage, when the actually important characters get demoted to extra. Except, you know, without the severe censorship, odd animation, and Ewoks being fluent in the Star Wars equivalent of English even though they don't actually speak it. That said, if you ignore the kidnapping and the ranger-like nature of the episode, it's definitely a good way to get into the Christmas spirit. And that's basically all it is. I'm feeling generous and Santa's right here, so I'm just gonna give Alpha's Magical Christmas a 4 out of 10. Probably would have given it a 3 out of 10 regardless, maybe a 2. I'm kind of wishy-washy on this point, though, honestly. Until next time, happy holidays to all, and to all a good night!